Hello everybody, my name is Walter and today I want to show you how you can build my simple and in theory infinitely expandable hidden nether portal. In theory because uh, well, Minecraft only allows for a certain portal size. Anyway, what is this about? As you can see at the moment all I have is this rather imposing but also somewhat boring wall with just a button over there. And if I were to press that very button and get a bit of a distance, you can already see what's this about. So the wall gets retracted via flying machines and can already see the beginnings of a portal frame, which will fill out with a portal once the retraction is done with a 21 by 21 portal in this case. Now the size of the portal is easily customizable. So this design is modular and can range from just a two by three portal up to the maximum size that Minecraft allows for. And well, that's basically what the thing is all about. If you press the button a second time, obviously the portal gets destroyed and the wall comes out again. That's the whole functionality of this build. With that out of the way, let's talk about the size of this design. Now, the size is obviously determined by the portal frame and also by the number of modules a bit. So the Design is modular, as I said, and each module is basically a four high strip of this portal, with the exception of the very bottommost line, which you can see gets retracted in, actually into the floor and not towards the back. So the number of modules is basically the height of the portal, minus one, divided by four, and then rounded up if needed. So with that said, let's talk about the sizes finally. So as you can see, the width of the build is width of the portal plus seven three on one side four on the other the height is the number of modules times four plus four so for this 21 by 21 with five modules it would give me a height of 24 blocks so one at the top and two at the bottom and the length of the build is just, with you counting the wall, a simple six blocks. So that's the size. And with that, let's talk about the required resources. So if you want to build this, you're first of all going to need the portal frame. For this portal behind me, I needed 84 obsidian blocks alone. This is just a portal frame without the corners. Next up, for everything except for the modules, you're going to need building blocks, then five obsidian blocks, two slime blocks, 37 redstone dust, a single redstone torch, five repeaters and five observers, four sticky pistons, two node blocks, two dispensers, a single water bucket, at least one flint and steel, a wooden button, and depending on whether you need to round the number of modules in the formula I gave you, you may also need additionally two node blocks. And now for each module, so in this example here, I needed those resources five times. So for each module, eight obsidian blocks, three slabs, seven slime blocks, eight redstone dust, two torches, two repeaters, four observers, a single normal piston and 10 sticky pistons. And with all of that out of the way, let's show you how to build this portal here. So once you know how big of a portal you want to actually hide away, it's time to start with the build. The first step is building the actual portal frame. For this example here, I want to go with a 21 by 21 sized portal. So the outer frame of obsidian blocks here is a ring that's 23 by 23 blocks with the corners actually left out since they are not needed. As you can see, I have already placed my dispensers too. Those two are in the bottom right corner. If you want them in the bottom left corner, you will have to mirror the entire build. Once you're at this point, let's go and start with the circuitry. For that, we start with a block of obsidian or another immovable block towards the front here. Then go to the back, place a normal block next to this dispenser and an obsidian block below the second dispenser. Then we need another obsidian block 
diagonally down from this block and then diagonally up another two normal blocks. Put two redstone wire here and a repeat on four ticks there. Then we need another obsidian block diagonally to this obsidian block here along this corner here. And then along this edge, we need a node block like this. Then behind the node block, place a row of two blocks going sideways and a raised block there. Then put down three redstone wire. And then a lowered block around the corner, raised block, lowered block around the corner, raised block. Put down two repeaters on four ticks each and a torch on top of this block. Grab a sticky piston, place it next to this block here, extending backwards with an observer in front of it looking at the repeater there. Diagon to the observer we need a full block. Then layer down we need two blocks going towards the front. One redstone wire there and a repeater on three ticks there with an observer looking at the repeater and running into this obsidian block there. Then let's go and add a water bucket to the dispenser here and to the dispenser in the corner here we need to add our flint and steel. Now let's add our flying machine. For that we need to go down here, start with an observer looking at the node block there. That observer runs into a slime block with a sticky piston to the side. In front of the sticky piston we need a slime block with another sticky piston next to that going in the opposite direction. Then place another observer running into this slime block here. And then finally, place a sticky piston facing upwards right below this obsidian block there. And that's the circuitry for this side more or less done. Now, uh, corresponding or in relation to the input, this wire here needs to be powered. This is our input line and that needs to be powered by a wooden button, essentially. Now, the simplest way to get this to the front is just extending it with two more blocks of uh, blocks and redstone wire then a block on top and that's where we place our button so this will be in line with the future wall and this wire here is hidden by the future floor so that's this side pretty much done then let's go to this side here here we first need to go down twice then towards the front we need an obsidian block and towards the left we need our node block. Following that, let's go back three times with my blocks. Then we need to go diagonally up towards the right, diagonally up towards the back, and then another two times diagonally up towards the left. And then just place redstone wire on top of those blocks. And that's the bottom part done and with that it's time to build the modules. Now before we get to building the first module it's first time to figure out how many modules in total we will need. The way to do this is simple. You take the height of the portal, in this case 21, subtract 1 which gives me 20, divide by 4 which gives me 5 and then if needed you round up. In this case I don't need that. So I will need 5 modules. Let's say you have a portal height of 11 blocks. This gives you 10 divided by 4, gives you 2.5. Rounded up gives you 3 modules in total. If you need to round, then uh, you will have to modify the topmost module uh, by leaving out some of the sticky pistons, but I will show you what I mean when we get to that. But for now, let's start with the first module. We go to our main circuitry here and to this torch here, which is the beginning of our straight torch tower on this side. Just place a block on top with another four blocks towards the left here. Four redstone wire and a torch in our torch tower. Then towards the front of this torch we need an obsidian block with a repeater on four ticks going in this direction. Then we place another block on top of the torch and 
another torch on top. That's pretty much the circuitry for one module on this side, which means now we can already place in our flying machine. So for that, start with the observer looking at this last wire piece here. Then we will need a slime block on the side of that. And then to the front, another slime block and one below that. Next, grab your sticky pistons, place two in this gap here. And another two towards the left of the slime blocks. Next, grab an observer, place it running from the top into this slime lock in the corner, and then place another sticky piston going away from this slime block we just talked about. Next, we need another sticky piston going in the opposite direction next to that. Then, grab some slime blocks, place two connecting the sticky pistons, and then another two at the top of the front slime block. Now it's time for some observers again. Place one on top of the slime block, running into the airspace above the sticky piston. Another one on top, running into the top slime block. And now it's time for another two sticky pistons here, another two in there. And then in front of the sticky pistons here, we need obsidian blocks extending the frame to the side. Uh, so that the uh, walls in front of this here are not removed accidentally. So, that's this side pretty much done. Now let's go over to this side here. Here, we start with a block on top of this wire. Uh, the following modules on top of that will also have a block with wire in this position, just well, 4 or 8 or 12 or so blocks above. Anyway, we start with a block on top, then an upside down snap to the right and to the front. The one at the front gets some redstone dust, and the one on the right gets a repeater on vortex running into this block. Here, next to the block with the wire, we need an obsidian block and a sticky, uh, non sticky piston running towards the right. Behind the repeater, we need a full block and then following that a lowered upside down slab. And then we go up diagonally with two blocks like so, place down four redstone wire. And as you can see, now we have our repeating pattern with the block with the redstone wire again here, just a bit higher. And again, every four blocks, the pattern repeats itself the same here. So you have the torch tower and you have this construct, which as a whole, is also stackable. And once you have copied this setup for every module, we are almost finished. So now let's quickly make a few modifications to this side here. Uh, I've totally forgot the extension of the frame on this side. So going from this obsidian block, you go one layer down and add two obsidian blocks to the frame going from there. And the same here, and the same there. And let me quickly do this for the five modules. Okay, so now that's done. For the topmost module, you can remove those three wire and two blocks. And on the first module, at the very bottom, we actually need to add something, which is... In this corner here, we need an observer powering downwards running into a full block. This is only needed for the first module. And with that, we are almost done. We still need to connect this side here with this side here. For that, just start with a wire or well, a row of blocks all the way from over there to right next to this torch here. Put a block on top of the torch and then run wire all the way over to the other side. At some point, depending on the size of your portal, the power will run out. Just remove the wire there and the next two wire too. Place two blocks at the ends of the wire and I repeat in there to spare some resources. And now all of those pistons here should extend and the power should reach all the way down there. And with that, we should actually be done, more or less.
So let's test this out. We've built everything in. We've connected everything. So let's press the button here. And we should see that part of the circuitry. Well, it should actually work everything. Not sure where those things came from. Uh, anyway, um, so everything came to this side here. Now let's press the button again. And you should see the whole system going in the opposing direction. And now the portal should actually turn on. Yes. That's the way it's supposed to look like. Um, yeah. So now let's do it the simple way. Just bring them to the left side or the side opposing to where we have the button. And let's add our wall. For that, let's do it as simple. Just let's use a simple fill command. And let's fill everything up to this point here. And let's do the same with the floor. Yeah, let's do this manually. And with that, we should actually be done. So now let's press the button again. And very shortly, the portal should open up. And I totally forgot the back of this entire thing. So obviously, we also need to fill in this part at the back here. But that shouldn't be too hard to do. So now the portal opens up properly and if we press the button again it also closes up properly and with that the build is finished now let's quickly talk about what happens if you had to round the number of modules now this essentially means that the top of our topmost module here is not in line with the top of our portal frame. So in my instance here, I had not to round. And as you can see, the module ends and the frame begins. Let's say the frame is one block lower than that. Now, obviously we don't need those sticky pistons here, but we still need to update those sticky pistons down here. So we will have to replace those two sticky pistons with node blocks. That's the configuration if you need to Go one block lower. Let's say you need to go two blocks lower. In that instance, you don't need those sticky pistons at all. And since those also don't need to be powered, you don't need that one, you don't need this one here, and you also don't need this one here. So this part of the flying machine is reduced to those four blocks here. And now for the last possibility, we don't need the first three or the top three layers. In that instance, again, you can remove those sticky pistons. This one here is already updated. This one here needs a node block. If you want to make sure that there are no problems with uh, update orders and similar, I would recommend adding another one there. And that's already the entire adaptions you may have to do if uh, the number of modules doesn't uh, fit perfectly with the size of your portal. And with that, we have reached the end of this tutorial for my simple and, in theory at least, infinitely expandable hidden nether portal. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial and, well, see ya!